Circadian Rejuvenation Med Spa, Charlotte's Fountain of Youth. Located in Cotswold, we are a luxurious one-stop med spa providing services with one goal in mind. We want you to look and feel your very best. We provide services such as microneedling, hydra and laser facials, laser hair, scar, and vein removal, and regenerative therapies such as hair restoration. Give yourself the gift of looking and feeling your best. Circadian Rejuvenation Med Spa. What's up, guys? Teddy Cornwell here. Welcome to the Underdog Talk. Something about the Underdog, the most underrated podcast, according to our guys at Generation Iron. But today, we have an absolute beast on the Underdog Talk. The one, the only, Mr. Richard Rodriguez. What is up, sir? How you doing today? Thank you, man. Thank you, man. Thank you for having me on the show. Um, doing great, you know. God's good. I've been I've been blessed and just you know just just moving along, man. Um, had uh, like um, I received nothing but love after after five and a half years down for for a mistake that uh, it's in my rearview mirror and nothing you know nothing's you know nothing but positive things, man. I got I got a few athletes. I'm you know a few athletes I, I continue to work with. I got my supplement line up and running, and I got my uh, my clinic that now. Has about twelve franchises with letters of intent and about to um, and about to um, launch pretty quickly. Congratulations, Richard! And as I always say, mistakes happen. It's all about how you move on in life. And obviously, we will, you know, get to the elephant in the room later. But what I want to do is, I really want to take it back. Actually, you were born in Staten Island in 1979 to a Puerto Rican mom and a Cuban dad. So I always yes. like to start. Richard, what was your childhood like? Well, the first four years of my life, I was homeless. Um, so it was very, very hard. So it's one of the things in which my mom used to constantly try to reiterate to me. So to learn to how to be humble and appreciative of, of what, of how we've evolved from being homeless the first four years of our lives to my father, my step pops, guy rest his soul. It was more like a father to me um took us you know took her under under his wing and um and eventually we we just started to live in brooklyn and it's funny because i remember i was about five or six years old and brooklyn at that time is not the brooklyn that it is now where there's like nothing but like but um for people the people that 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 um that have um that have nothing but like um it's a, it's a, it's an industry where it's nothing but I'm sorry man I get confused with this with what, what just transpired and I got interrupted really interrupted yeah, you're good. um that the you know the Brooklyn that it is now it's like you have the Hasidic Jews um it's practically like a New York City now it's like an, an extension of New York City whereas like during that time it was very very bad dude it's like you could you couldn't go outside for like practically anything or you'll get robbed or killed or, or there's a shootout practically all the time so uh my step pops had a bright idea of saying hey you know what let's like let's not raise our kid because he always referred to me as his kid you know um let's not raise our kid um here in, in brooklyn so they moved me to the projects in the bronx which was even worse <laughs> where like probably like um at three percent, three percent of those of those kids, unfortunately, ever evolved from there for, for, with anything positive. But um, neither here or there, dude. It's like I was always self motivated. At the age of nine, I was already working, uh, packing bags and making deliveries at a local supermarket because, hey, you know what? I wanted the hundred twenty thousand uh, dollars, the hundred twenty dollar Jordans, and guess what? My mother couldn't afford them. My step pops couldn't afford them, so I was gonna figure out a damn way to get them myself. <laughs> I like that. And it seems like, you know, your stepfather was definitely a person that you looked up and, you know, obviously rest his soul, as you mentioned. Now, to me, it always seems, and to me, it seems like you've been a fighter and I'm going to use the word a hard worker. You get what you want and you'll do what it takes to do it. Now, I want to jump into the next kind of portion. You've received, you know, many big personal accolades, Richard, in your career um, and your companies also have been highly recognized as industry leaders throughout the years, obviously in 2012, you know, I have to throw this out because this is an amazing achievement. You were named the Latino Trend Center of the Year by Latin Trends Magazine. I mean, you were also recognized for many business leader awards, including top innovator uh, in science by the NYC Cranes business. So, you know, some big accolades there. But what I also want to look at too in is, you know, you were a top businessman 
in the fitness and wellness industry. So first, Richard, really, when did you fall in love with health and wellness, sir? Well, I was, I always, um, I always had a, I always had a, a dream when I was a kid. Um, at the age of thirteen, I used to compete in sports. I, I, you know, I started off in kickboxing, and that was when I was exposed to the world of anabolics and performance enhancement drugs. I was, um, I was thirteen years old and dedicated, relentless fighter. And however, I was getting my ass kicked all the time. So um, I went to my Shihan and told him, I was like, hey, man, it's like, why is it that I'm focusing and working out just as hard as these people and they're kicking my ass? And he's like, oh, well, they're taking multivitamins. And I'm like, great. I want those vitamins. <laughs> Lo and behold, they weren't necessarily the vitamins that I envisioned at that tender age. I was taking already the Anabol and Anadrol. But it was something that the, the how can I say, the passion of competitive sports, it always drove me into wanting to be the best. Never shoot for mediocrity. Um, get involved in the in, in the areas of sports to the point where um, one of the things in which I used to watch constant reruns in, uh, of it's like um, Pump and Iron. <laughs> you know, I, I, <laughs> to this day, and, and it's crazy because um, when I finally had the opportunity of you know of evolving from the corporate world, graduating from the Ivy League school with an MBA from NYU, and then from there evolving into um, working at McKenzie, a publicly traded company for six and a half years. And after that, it's like finally working with all the individuals that I used to follow um, and envision of like being like my role models in bodybuilding and powerlifting, you name it. It's like now being clients, it was just like a, it was like a match made in heaven, dude. And it's something that, um, it's something that was, I wouldn't want to say that it was planned, mm -hmm. but it, it was definitely something that was an eye opener. For, uh, it was an eye opener for me and it was also a humbling experience. A hundred percent. And I can add on to that is obviously, you know, one of your pictures on Instagram is with the man himself, Kevin Lavroni, who was on the show. And, and to me, I can relate to that. You know, obviously I've always been in the fitness industry. To me, I grew up, my generation was Generation Iron, funny enough, so I grew up watching all those guys, and to me, it's a humbling experience to have them on my show, and to be able to talk to them, it's like, you know, who am I? But I, I feel that it's not planned, it's more of a, I don't even want to say destiny, it's more of a hard work, and when you love something, you'll do what it takes to do well in that industry. So obviously, another accolade I want to look at, you know, and obviously, the elephant in the room, the Iron Addicts Gym Miami was named best gym franchise in Miami and fastest growing and most uh, HRT, TRT clinic in 2015. So my first question to you is, how did Iron Addicts, you know, come to be in Miami? Well, it's funny you said that. Um, so like I said, it all, it all goes back to me always wanting to have owned my own gym since I was, you know, since I was involved in sports. So when, um, when wellness, fitness, nutrition started to grow rapidly, what I started doing was, was like, Hey, I started following influencers mm -hmm. in the industry. Um, started following Mike Rishi, started following CT Fletcher, the strip cartel, big Rob, a lot, a lot of those folks. And, um, you know, bounty tank, all those people that used to be clients. And I told myself, I was like, look, if I'm going to invest in a, in a franchise or we're going to um, go all in and dump millions into this because let's face it, gyms don't make money. Um, I've succeeded in the two most saturated markets with the highest probabilities of failure and not just competed in those industries, but became the best. So um, a perfect example would be like just for Iron Addicts Gym Miami. By, by April 13th, when, we, when it was the grand opening, I was $2.3 million in. And I made $2.5 in one day in the grand opening. So a lot of people, when they, when they say, well, how the hell you did that? I was like, it's marketing. And it was a very complex, thought-out strategy. Knowing that gyms don't make money, you have to figure out one of the things in which I always used to say in marketing is if you're not unique, you better be cheap. So what's your what's the overt benefit um, in Miami in particular, as vanity driven as that place was and continued to and, and continues to be, there was no Mecca. Mm -hmm. You see, cre trying to create an Iron Addicts gym Miami <clears throat> in California, where there's a Venice Beach goes, I would fail. Yeah. I would have failed miserably uh, because that's the reasons why Iron Addicts gym in California 
cre- created that little niche, hardcore in the in the area where where um, where C T Fletcher resided. Made all the sense in the made all the sense in the world. Doesn't doesn't make remotely close to how much I was making. I was making about sixty to seventy thousand dollars a month net. That gym in Miami, net. So something. And why? Because I <clears throat> I focused on. Hey, you know what? With it, with with there's all the hot girls. There's gonna become the guys. And when I when I started doing my due diligence, specifically in Miami. I realized that the people that were spending money was not was not the guys. It was the women that were you know that had an average three to four different memberships on a monthly basis. Either they had yoga, they had meal prep, they had boxing, and they had another gym member. So they were spending on average about seven hundred to fifteen hundred dollars a month in gym memberships. So what did I do? I I put on retainer the two most expensive photographers in Miami, a guy by the name of Solomon Yuraka and George Ulrich, and pretty much instantaneously had all the females in fitness, all the females in bikini, all the strippers, everybody, all the who's who's and influencers in, you know, in, in, in that, in that little area of Miami, all in that gym. And from there, practically it was, you know, it was over. I, I leveraged the athletes and celebrities that I worked with <clears throat> at WFN to the standpoint where we had over 3,500, I mean, 30, 3,500 people in attendance on the grand opening. Uh, there's videos all over it in YouTube, man. Wow. And I mean, what a gym was it? But obviously, what a gym was it now? You know, this next portion, obviously, February 22, 2017, you obviously, you know, you were arrested at Miami International Airport. Now, Richard, you had built, and it's no secret if you guys don't know, Richard has built one of the largest steroid operations in U.S. history, if not the biggest, you know, actually the lar- the largest, actually. And the it's largest. Not, not to sound, not to not to toot my own horn, but it's it's still considered still considered from a revenue perspective the largest at over twenty eight million in annual revenue. God. Yeah. So now I think Richard, I want to sit back. I want to you know listen to why you did it, you know, and re- really everything about it, sir. The floor is yours. Well, I mean, it all started. It all started when um, my ex-wife was uh, three months pregnant, and, and we were living in New York. And she was like, um, "Hey, I'm sick and tired of New York. I wanna, uh, I want us, to, I want us to move to our to our condo uh, in Miami." And I'm like, uh, "Yeah, but we've been trying to move to Miami for the past three and a half years, and..." Either you don't find a position that appeals to you, or I don't find a position that appeals to you, or you have a job, or I have a job that's great. So she's like, she's like, yeah, you got a point. So what ends up happening? Um, literally, well, within a month from that conversation, uh, she uh, lost her job due to wrongful termination. Got a very nice severance package because she's a licensed CPA accountant. Mm-hmm. She worked for a private equity firm, and during that time, I worked for Quest Diagnostics. I ended up losing my job off of wrongful termination. So go figure. So what did I do? I started just pack my shit. I told I told her like, hey, I have a business meeting, which practically I lied, and I just went to Miami and just started looking for condos. So all in conjunction with looking for condos all across Miami, I was also interviewing with some of the top companies, you name it, McDonald's, Oracle, Citrix Systems, um, some of the top Fortune 500 companies and all of them, when I'm interviewing with these individuals, it's like, mind you, I'm an, I'm, I'm an executive working at McKinsey, averaging about two to $260,000 a year, you know, and I'm going now to Miami and looking at VP positions and, 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 and senior executive positions getting paid 60, 70 for the same exact job I'm doing in New York. And I'm looking at these people. I was like, well, let me, let me get this straight. This is what you want me to do. Or you want me to do more work than I'm already accustomed to. And you're paying me a quarter of what I'm accustomed to. And they're like, yeah. I was like, what, what drug are you taking, man? Like, <laughs> I want to manufacture it. <laughs> so, so realizing that, that that was just no way in hell it was going to happen, that I would be able to successfully maintain my lifestyle. Yeah. I, while I was driving, like, you know, exp- exp- exploring condos, I was looking at these HRT and pre clinics all left and right, like, like, like they're grocery stores in the hood. So I'm like, shit, this, this must be fucking legal. Part of my French. 
So what I ended up doing was I started researching. It's like, how is the best way that I can um, get into this industry, knowing the people that I know? Because by that time, I already knew all the bodybuilders and powerlifters because I was in the, I was in the competitive sports. So um, what I ended up doing was I said, it's like, hey, you know what? Let me launch something that's not a brick and mortar and, and just see where it goes. And what originally was, was, and I accepted a position with Citrix Systems, paying me about $75,000 a year. So my intentions was to have Citrix Systems, which was a two-year contract, and have this just be something to supplement my income. I Like, if this made me a couple of thousand dollars a month, I'll be happy as a pig and shit. Yeah. But make a long story short, I started off in Facebook groups. I started off, um, I started off in Facebook groups. I started off in about two forums. Within a month's time, I was doing about $2,000 in sales a day. And that's just me and three people in India that I outsourced some SEO and online marketing strategies that I've learned and replicated through other drugs that I used to market while during my tenure at McKenzie. <clears throat> to the standpoint why by month three, I had fuck you power, dude. <laughs> I'm sorry to say, by month three, I was doing close to about ten, fifteen thousand dollars of sales a day. Quit the, uh, quit, uh, quit working in a Citrix. Quit working at Citrix. Um, hired a couple of individuals. Still during that time, I was redistributing someone else's product. I wasn't doing mine. So um, shit, like by like month eight, less than a year, I was doing approximately. 15 to 20,000 sales a day. And then that's when um, I discovered the powers of influencer marketing. The first people I retained was my role model that unfortunately is a major fucking douchebag, uh, Flex Wheeler. I retained Flex Wheeler as one of the first sponsored athletes and Stan Efferding. Um, and dude, just them two got me to like 30K like that, 30K a day. And that's when I just started getting addicted and seeing how, you know, the, the opportunities of influencer marketing that I retain, you know, the Little Bridges, Brandon Lilly, Brandon Curry, all the top pros to the standpoint where it was funny because by like 2000, by late 2014, I was going to all the bodybuilding shows and, and powerlifting competitions. And I'm like, he's on my shit. He's on my shit. He's on my shit. He's on my shit. I know his protocol. He's eventually going to be my client in about a month. And so it's like, I was pract I practically represented over 80% of the bodybuilding market and 70% of the powerlifting community just with my products. And and then from there, like I started experimenting with other companies and and, and got in involved in the porn industry and was introduced to Ron Jeremy and Dan Bazarian. And dude, I started selling um, like dick injections and a couple of other products into the into the porn industry. And by then, dude, it was like no turning back, man. I was like in the 50, 60K a day range in gross income to the standpoint where um, I had a secession plan because I knew that the way in which I was, a lot of people say that I was just ahead. Whereas like you see now that everything is telemedicine right now. Yeah. Everything is like telemedicine. So I was embracing telemedicine when it wasn't embraced. Yes. Was I prescribing Trembolo? Yes. Was I prescribing Equipoise? That's no way in hell ever going to be able to prescribe, be prescribed legally. And my clinic now, of course, they don't prescribe because it's illegal. But that's not to say that my intentions when I was launching WFN, I did not have a secession plan. And my secession plan at that point in time, if you if you researched my company thoroughly, you would have seen that November 2016, I had Kevin Lerone and I had Mike Rasheed promote a company called Hormone Club. Mm -hmm. And there's videos about it um, all over YouTube. And that was WFN's secession plan. The only thing about it was it was just too late. <laughs> Poorly planned. To the standpoint where if it wasn't for uh, my brother and my best friend of 22 years, I'm not going to name names, um, peop um, I probably would have still been operational right now. Okay. Now, I guess the question to you, Richard, do you regret any of it? Nope. Because um, at the end of the day, um, I've, I've told people that regretting lessons in life is you being, um, is you being, um, is you not learning from them. Hold on for just one second. Um, uh, 
It's you not actually learning from them. Um, I've used to cut class. I used to, um, I used to smoke weed. I used to beat up the bullies. I used to do so many things in my life where if I was to say, it's like, Hey, do I regret it? And be like, and say, yes, it's like this. I would be a hypocrite. Why? Because at that point in time, that's what I felt was right. At that point in time, when I launched WFN, I knew that my lifespan was going, if I continued engaging in criminal activity, was going to be one to three years. So I, so it was imperative for me to actually <laughs> develop a, success, a successful succession, succession plan. And gyms very similar to like Iron Addicts Gym Miami and the platform, the Hormone Club, were my succession plans. So I, w- I knew damn well that I was going to be doing time. The only thing about it was I just didn't know that I was going to get caught that quickly and um, most importantly by people that I wholeheartedly trust. You know, now I'm not endorsing steroids or the usage of it, but I will agree with, you know, mistakes are part of life, whether they be, you know, monumental or small, it, it, it happens, you know, there's no going back into the past, you know, none of us are, are time travelers. We can't go into the past and change it. You know, I'm not saying you would or wouldn't. I'm just saying if I could change my mistakes, I obviously would, but I've kind of developed that mindset too, Richard, obviously where, you know, when I make a mistake and I'm beating myself up on it, it it's, it's kind of, I need to learn from it, grow from it and then move on because I can't really dwell on it for the rest of my life. So I, I do agree with, with that standpoint, you know, now obviously you talked about, it, it was a mistake. And I think that's where we grow. So I want to ask you, Richard, what is one thing or what is the thing, you know, you learned about yourself in this part of your life? That um, the things that truly matter to you uh, at that point in time, when you're making that amount of money, you don't really realize until it's taken away from you. Um, I like it's, I'll give you a perfect example. Um, while prison in those five years that I've done was a blessing in disguise, it was also um, it was also hard, man. It's like like it took me three and a half years to have my son, man, and not being hit, not being there for him to graduate from pre K, um, having to avoid the question of where I am, you know when. When everywhere I went, man, it's like if, it, if I was training an athlete in England, if I was training an athlete in Japan and Australia, it was my son. It was my son at two years old. Like by the time he was three, like he had more places in his passport than someone ever in his lifetime. It's like that. That was tough, man. Um, losing lo- losing a person that was with me for 19 years through good and bad, which is like my ex-wife. Um, shit like that. Like, you know, shit like that hurt, man. It, it hurt so much that. Um, those five years, I tell people, is like, it's not the fact of doing prison time because prison is like a fucking fraternity if you're not a rat or if you're not a child molester. It's a fucking fraternity. But for a person that has so much um, going for themselves and has a kid, has a family, um, and has been an individual that his family relied on, that's what fucking hurts, man. It's like so much that I, I like... Man, I, I, I have tempted to commit suicide three times, bro. Three times from the time I was, I was in prison. Because it's not easy, man. I wouldn't even wish prison to even the people that I despise the most in my life, man. Oh, you know, I was listening to everything you said, Richard. And I think the other reason I wanted to have you on my show, obviously, talking about that one event, you know, an event that did happen is I think, I wanted to showcase that, you know, people can mis- make mistakes, move on and become a better person. Because obviously now, Richard, you are doing so much good. You know, I've been following you on RX Muscle. You know, you seem happy again. Now, I mean, would you mind talking about what you're currently doing, Richard? And then, you know, even what's next for you, Richard? Because it seems like it's full of positivity now and a different outlook, sir. Well, um, just to kind of give you some insight, um, June 8th. I got out June of uh, three in the morning at Jackson, uh, Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, five in the morning, my business partner picks me up. Seven in the morning, I'm grinding, bro. 
I got myself, I got my 13 Pro Max. I'm grinding, like getting on interviews. And dude, the the amount of love, mm-hmm. I mean, that I received, like within days of being released, LeBroni, Dennis James, you name it, um, calling me and, and saying that, hey man, we wish you the best. It's like, what do you need? And I was like, Dude, I had to take I had to take days to like re like readjust because I was like, holy crap! I thought that I was gonna have to like start all over again. Minimally, take about a year or two to recuperate. No, within like three days, I was already a regular on RX Muscle. Like Dave Palumbo, a person that was I used to talk bad about my company. <laughs> bad. <laughs> I mean, granted, it's like, you know, he had a channel and he, he was promoting Titan at that point in time. So there was a reason for it. It's neither here or there. It's water under the bridge. But we like we became the best of friends. You know, we became the best of friends. John Bravo that followed my documentary um, since, since the day of the bus, introducing me to all these individuals. Dave Palumbo introducing me to all these business potential investors to the standpoint where, dude, within the first week, I already had six offers for becoming a partner for HRT, TRT companies. And I had five people that were interested in investing in my supplement line for which I chose one, mentored two others, and now have uh, my my supplement line trademarked, um, about to launch. And I have I have been working on my clinic now with Dr. Pleasy from Circadia Rejuvenation now for about a little over about a month and a half. It's been going well, man. We've secured... 12 franchises with three of them uh, issuing deposits and a doctor network where we can now um, replicate our turnkey solution even in 38 other countries, not just the United States. Wow. So something along those lines over the span of what? Two months and two months and two weeks. Mm. (laughs) Not too bad. You know, so if, if so, yeah, granted, it's like, I'm not going to lie to people here, man. It's like, I, like I've been working my ass off. And when I mean where I work in my ass off, it's like religiously four in the morning, seven o'clock at night. I take a two hour break from seven o'clock to nine o'clock at night to be a choreographer for my son on TikTok. <laughs> Cause he loves, he loves his damn TikTok and dancing, but, uh, and and, you know, and coaching him, uh, you know, with his reading, because he has ADHD, you know, re- with his reading and his studying, because I'm on home confinement right now till September 29th. So I'm not going to be able to, like, see him and be with him regularly until next month. Mm-hmm. But um, those are, like, literally, like, just the two-hour breaks that I have. And then I go back from after 9 o'clock when I'm done with him. I'll spend another hour to prepare for the following day. So um, do I like doing what I do? Absolutely. Hence the reasons why I don't look at it, it, it as work. That's the reason why I tell people all the time, especially the ones in which I mentor, is that find something that you absolutely truly enjoy. Because if it's something that you absolutely truly enjoy, you could be on that shit for 20 hours a day and time would just fly without you even thinking twice. Oh, The fact, yeah, the fact that I'm about transforming people's lives for the better. The fact that I'm about helping individuals evolve personally, professionally, and and um, and physically, it you know it's something I enjoy. It's it like um, it's something that I've been doing since. I mean, even when I was 13, 14, 15 years old, a young kid, I was always the kid beating up the bullies because I never liked like you know them being picked on to the standpoint where I never had a problem with my classes because. The, the geeks were the ones helping me out <laughs> because I was indirectly helping them out. But I've always had that type of mentoring, um, nurturing type of uh, type of mindset, even even when I was a kid. So it was only natural, you know, when I got, you know, when I came, you know, like when, when I got out, I mean, little do people know, even when uh, I was, um, you know, even when I was incarcerated for the, you know, for five years, the way in which I was making my commissary is still helping my, my ex-wife and my son was actually um, I was helping and launching businesses, legitimate businesses for people that were incarcerated. Wow. Through the cell phone. Yeah. Um, to the standpoint where I launched two pretty big successful businesses that um, that have, you know, were some of the main investors for my, you know, for my initiatives now and um, and paid me, you know, paid me my apartment <laughs> that I'm going to be living in, in uh, you know, in you know, next month. So I tell people, I was like, look, it's about, 
doing something positive, you know, it's like, do, like, you know, learning from what's negative. It's like, yeah, I was incarcerated for those five years. And while in those five years, you had people doing drugs, being depressed, being, um, you know, attempting to commit suicide, doing something negative. It's like, yeah, did I have a cell phone illegally? Absolutely. But you know why? One, because I wanted to stay socially re relevant. I wanted to bounce back as fast as I possibly can because I knew I wasn't doing a life sentence. But most importantly, I wanted to be a father. Um, people that have been incarcerated would know that whenever you pick up that phone call, every 10 seconds on that 15 minute call, you usually hear a message. This call is from a federal prison. I did, I never, ever wanted my son to ever hear those words. Cause the last thing I wanted him to hear was the, the, the last time, the last thing I wanted to hear was a follow up question. It's like, dad, why are you in prison? And I'm grateful to this day. And my ex-wife and I were able to hide that from him. That's not to say that when he grows up, because he's eight now, when he grows up and he's at a reasonable age, I'm going to let him know because at the end of the day, it's about learning. It's like, hey, you know what? There's no shortcuts in life. You know, it's like you have to be by the, you know, you have to be by the book. If not, no. you're going to end up like, you, like your dad did for five years. Wow. And I mean, I think you just took the positive out of a negative situation. And then, you know, obviously... I think the only uh, illegal action that you've done, Richard, that I will I will accept is beating up the bullies. There you go. That's that's good. That's good. Now, um, you know, obviously, you know that I'm so glad that you you didn't end anything because you know often we might feel like we're in those moments where we feel like there is no there is no hope. It's just an end right now. It's a black hole. And I think the one big thing that I've heard and so many people preach it, it's not the end. You know, it's not, it's not the end, you know, light will come through that darkness, you know, flowers need a little bit of rain to grow. And I'm not saying that it's not okay to have, you know, mental health problems. It's more than okay. It's be open about it and, you know, never, never find a way out. Try and talk to someone, get the help you need. If you know someone who is looking or even talking about, you know, ending their life, get them the help. There's, you know, so many organizations now that are helping with that. And Richard, I'm so glad you are here today, sir. So I think the world is better with Richard Rodriguez in it, obviously, because you are doing so much positive, you know, for the community and for the fitness industry now, sir. So Richard, yeah. I want to end this interview with, you've really seen it all in the business world. There is no ifs and buts. You have seen it all in the business world, sir. But what is your one biggest tip for someone who is looking to start a company? Um, do something, do something you love, even though initially upon doing the research is not the most profitable. Cause let's face it. Um, you could be licensed, you could be a licensed CPA and easily make $250,000 a year being a CPA for some, for some organization, but be fucking miserable. Uh, but if, it, if it's baking cookies, but you're a CPA accountant, work on your side hustle, because I've seen this, I've seen it with so many people that just because they're passionate about their side hustle, they evolved to, to becoming bi uh, millionaires and even billionaires. I mean, one perfect example was my financial advisor when I worked at McKenzie, a lady by the name of Patricia Heldon. She used to make a half a million dollars a year as a financial analyst. She, but she was a phenomenal brownie ma manufacturer. Like she used to make the freaking illest brownies. So make a long story short, um, after having a phenomenal year at JP Morgan Chase, she quit. And I was like, Patricia, what the hell are you doing? You're making almost a million dollars a year. She said, like, nope, I'm launching a company. I trademarked the name Fat Witch. I'm going to launch a company called Fat Witch Bakeries. I was like, great. How can we do, you know, how can we ensure that this is successful? She was like, she was like, I need, I need a brand. I need a name. I need somebody to endorse it. I worked with her. Unbeknownst to my mentor, I helped her get into the Oprah O list. Her brownies were in fucking Oprah. Dude, and that's all it took. All it took was for fucking Oprah to endorse her fucking brownie. And she went to like a $9 million fucking brownie company practically the first year. And this is a person that hated her fucking job no matter how much money she was making. And I helped her enjoy what the hell she was doing. Now she's working longer hours. <laughs> but Fat Witch now, it's a $20 million company with brownies. <laughs> Yeah, so I tell so if, if, like make to, to a short suggestion: do what you love because the money will come. Amen. And you know, to be honest, let me add something: do what you love, and sometimes if the money doesn't come, 
try and find a hustle, but always side hustle, but always do what you love. You know, life's about enjoyment. Life's yeah. short to do something that you don't like. I mean, I am probably the happiest I've ever been doing this podcast. And let me tell you what underdog talk you may think I, I get some income having the top guests in the world on. I've not made a single penny and that's never been what this show is about. This show is meant to inspire. This show is meant to motivate, just give advice. And honestly, I'm having the most fun I've ever had in my life. So, and you know, if the money does come, the money does come and it'll help support this amazing podcast. But guys, you are why I love this show. Thank you guys for watching. Now, Richard, it has been an honor and privilege, sir. I'm, I'm okay. honored and privileged to talk with you. I'm impressed to see how you changed your life around after a mistake and how you became better. You know, your son can now be proud of you and who you are because I think there is so much to be proud of. I can't wait for him to see you. You know, that's going to be such an amazing moment. Now, before we go, sir, is there anything you want to plug, you know, where we can find your businesses, where we can find, you know, anything you're working on, sir? Yeah, I'm still, um, I'm still accepting a couple of other potential uh, mentoring and coaching opportunities that did not a conflict of interest with my existing clients. So you could always just go to uh, rodriguezrichard.com, book your free 30 minute consultation. Um, and I'll get back to you um, immediately with respects to that. Um, if you're interested in, in um, only owning your own HRT, TRT spa franchise, it's something that you could also reach out to me um, since spots are definitely limited as the way in which we're, you know, as we're expanding very, very quickly. But most importantly, man, it's like I have a text message service and I have an email, man. It's like uh, I'm all for like, you know, like giving as much advice and as much coaching and inspiration as I possibly can. Um, because one, um, I never had that when I, you know, it's like, I never had that, um, you know, when I needed it. So I know how important it is, especially, you know, it's like in, in competitive, in as competitive these markets and ruthless as these markets are, it's always good to know that you can have somebody only a text message or an email away, man. Now, Richard, I do have one final question for you, sir. What is the process of starting a legal HRT, TRT clinic like? Is that a hard process? I um, if you have a company that already has a turnkey solution set up like circadian, not much. And what I mean by that is like, we have, we have like three different tiers. We have a hundred thousand dollars, six, a $60,000 tier and a $40,000 tier. And, and with that, you get all our medical directors, you get all our access to all our pharmacy. It's basically you acquiring our intellectual property. If you were going to start it from scratch, yes, it's, it's, <laughs> It's a very expensive endeavor. Just to give you an example, when I was launching Hormone Club with WFM making fifty to sixty thousand dollars a day, I probably put about four million dollars into the Hormone Club for it to finally be completely above board. Whereas, like Circadian, Circadian has been in existence for about nine years, already has that infrastructure in place. So when I came on board, you know, in, um, in, in mid June, it was really just teaching them the franchise model, teaching them the licensure model, um, getting them licensed globally in the other markets that he wasn't licensed in to ensure that all the I's you know, are dotted and all the T's are crossed. And then from there, just talking and interacting with a couple of individuals that I knew that were already interested in launching their own HRT companies. And when they looked at the business model and they looked at what we're doing just in Charlotte alone and what differentiates us from every other HRT company, that's why it's like literally like a no brainer. I mean, I have yet to have one person that I presented the business model to and they were like, I'm not interested. <laughs> and like, it, it, it's either t it, it, like the only reasons why they don't get, haven't given me a check as of today is because they're gathering the funds to actually, to actually launch the clinic. But none of them, not one has said, it's like, hey, you know what? I don't want to move forward because I don't think this business model is viable. And this is 100% legal, right, Richard? I'm just playing obviously. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, it's like, it's just like I told all of them. It's like, hey, you know what? I've learned within two months of being incarcerated that this wasn't the place for me. Yeah. I didn't need to do five years. And I lost five years of my son's life. And um, I'm not going to lose more. And most importantly, uh, uh, some of the athletes and celebrities that are franchisee owners now, um, have done their due diligence with some of the top attorneys. We have all our licenses that would be more than willing to divulge. Um, that's one of the main reasons why I aligned myself with Dr. Pleasy versus all the other HRT, TRT clinics, because 
I'm the type of person that has a tendency to go 100 miles an hour. Like I see it, I see an opening, I'm moving forward and, it's like, and, and, and address issues as they evolve. Yep. Whereas like him, he already handled that. The legalities and the logistics, the compliance piece and all that stuff, he's done that. Granted, he had an unfair advantage of working with me a year prior to me being released to make sure that that's already structured. Because I, because um, just to kind of give you an idea, I was um, while I was incarcerated as a, as a way to be to make money, I was also having two or three people that I would mentor. Hmm. So I was helping him. So I was helping him get that infrastructure in place because I knew that as soon as I got out, I was either going to align myself with him or I was either going to launch my own HRT TRT clinic because I know that that it was possible for it to be completely 100% above board. It was just a matter of one, the investment and the time it would take to actually launch it. Hey, well done, Richard. It has been an honor and privilege talking with you, sir. You know, guys, don't forget to check out Richard's content, Richard's training. Everything will be in the bio. Go check Richard out. Now, guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe on this YouTube video. Until next time, guys, underdog out. For your fountain of youth, Circadian Rejuvenation Med Spa is Charlotte's luxurious one-stop med spa. We offer microneedling, hydra and laser facials, laser hair, scar, and vein removal, cryo skin treatments, medical weight loss solutions, and much more. Visit us online today at circadianrejuvenation.com and give yourself the gift of looking and feeling your best. Book your free consultation today at Circadian Rejuvenation Med Spa. It's not just a service, it's an experience.